Hey, what's up guys? So welcome to the Ultimate Season Journey Guide, going over Season 19 with all of the unlocks. So I recently uploaded a video going over the Conquest, but this video is going to be focused in on doing the entire Season Journey, which technically the Conquest is part of it, but don't worry, you can watch this video first. It doesn't matter in the order that you complete the things in, but uh, what I'm going to recommend you guys to do for this is check the pinned comment because I know some people are just looking for like chapter four, they're looking for like Slayer Champion, whatever quest that you're on as far as the season journey. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of different timestamps so you guys can go ahead and fast forward to maybe the section that you're on. So what I'm going to recommend you guys to do is complete chapters one through four first and we'll go ahead and go over all of the objectives. Uh, but we're going to do chapters one through four. And then we're going to actually do Guardian, Conqueror, Destroyer, Champion, Slayer backwards. The reason why we're going to be doing these backwards is because some of the quests will actually double up. And if you complete the one on Guardian, it will also complete the one on Slayer because it's just the same exact quest. But it's basically just a further down the line as far as difficulty or certain gameplay mechanics. But overall, if you do the one on Guardian, you'll end up probably saving yourself some time. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, uh, the rewards, I just wanna go over this really quick because I know some people are wondering what the rewards are. So when you go ahead and complete everything, you'll get several different portrait frames. Um, these are two of them here. Uh, the other one just has different color variation on like the leaves over here. And then you also get the uh, goblin pet. And in addition to getting the goblin pet, there is a horse, unicorn, uh, dream of peers pet, and of course, angelic goblin. But now that uh, we've got the rewards out of the way, let's go ahead and start off with chapter one. So uh, first off, we have to be in an adventure mode for a lot of these to be available. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to access adventure mode. And again, if you guys are familiar with some of these concepts, uh, I want this video to be as thorough as possible because there are newer Diablo players. Maybe they just got it um, for Black Friday or whatever the case may be. Um, what you want to do is go into game settings and you're going to go ahead and select adventure mode. There's campaign, adventure. You have to complete the campaign before accessing adventure mode. Um, but once you complete it once, um, you don't have to do it again for every single season. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just hop into a private game over here. You can do public games as well for some of these uh, rifts. It does make things a lot faster. Uh, but at the very beginning, you might not be able to have this torment difficulty. So make sure you change the difficulty to whatever you can do. The higher that you can go, though it is better and the reason why is because it will complete some of your other quests later down the line for the season journey but for the sake of the video we'll do a private game because i'm gonna be sitting in town basically talking and explaining how the heck everything works so uh, you want to be in adventure mode for the season journey quest. So the first one over here uh, was to finish a level 70 nephilim rift on torment 13 uh, difficulty with, uh, within four minutes on Guardian. But we're gonna be, again, starting off with chapter one. So this one, you can see it just says complete a Nephilim Rift. That's why I always say go higher because uh, essentially a lot of these are going to be the same. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna do chapter one through four first because this is gonna allow you to get your six piece set. Uh, with the six piece set, pretty much most characters can breeze through majority of the content. Um, and once you get up to like Torment 16, things will get a little bit more difficult. But for the most part, once you get your six piece, you'll be good to go for most of the uh, the quests over here. It depends on what class you're playing, as well as did you get that one other item that modifies your damage multiplier? And I think a lot of you guys are playing Barbarian, so like basically all you would really need is to have like Lamentation over here and you should be good to go once you have your uh, six piece set. And then you'll also need other uh, damage multipliers or things that uh, will let you progress a little bit faster. In our case with Barbarian this season, it's going to be Ambo's Pride. But again, it's kind of class dependent for the most part you should be able to clear most of the content uh once you go ahead and get your six piece which we're going to go ahead and focus in on so with chapter one we just complete a nephilim rift and it says use the uh, nephilim obelisk in town while in adventure mode to start a nephilim rift so what you do it's in every single act but there's this little uh, thing called the Nephilim Obelisk. You can open up your map if you don't know where it's at. And it is in every act. All you have to do is click on it, and then you just click on Nephilim, and then you just go ahead and accept. Later, you will do uh, Greater Rifts, and uh, you will need a Keystone. And how you get the Keystone is just by doing the Nephilim Rift, defeating the uh, boss, which is the Guardian, and he will drop the uh, Greater Keystone. We actually have a bunch, so here's what it looks like. 
but uh, you will get these once you uh, kill the boss in a regular Nephilim Rift. So what the heck a Nephilim Rift is, and you will need to complete it for the uh, conquests, and again, uh, I will pin a video down below that shows the uh, completion of a uh, Rift and the mechanic of it. Um, but again, for the sake of this video, it's not going to be in here because there's a lot of other things that are going to take like 10, 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm just going to go ahead and link a lot of these videos down below so this video is more concise and people can get to exactly what the heck they're looking for. But it's pretty self explanatory. You just go ahead and kill a bunch of uh, enemies and once the bar fills up, you find a boss. So um, you're going to go ahead and do that uh, for the first objective. And the second one is going to be complete five bounties, open up the waypoint map in adventure mode to see what bounties are available. So what a bounty is, is a quest that you'll access in adventure mode and you'll have to do every single one in every single act. You want to do this as high as possible because later down the line, as far as the quests go, you'll see that they will require certain bosses defeated on a difficulty and Basically, you can double up on some of the quests over here to make things much faster. But what you want to do is actually join bounties. So let me go ahead and actually show you guys how that works because how it works is you are playing solo in a group. They're called split bounties. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and join a game, again, as high as torment difficulty that you can uh, go and actually complete. Um, and what you're going to do is make sure the tag over here, you select bounties. So what you're going to do is do these bounties. We're going to go ahead and do it in a private game over here. But you normally would join a game with uh, bounties because you want to go ahead and be able to complete them as fast as possible. When you have four people in a group, it's going to get things done much faster because you will each individually do these quests. Don't go where other people are going. So you'll see on the map, usually what happens is one player will take one act. And then at the very end, you'll join up. Uh, and do the same act, but you'll do every single objective still separately. A lot of the objectives for these will be like kill this boss or open up a chest. There's like a cursed shrine, but they're very simple. Let's go ahead and show you how it works. So with the bounties where it says kill and they'll have like a boss name, right? Or it's basically an elite pack. It'll usually say that kill certain amount of enemies or it'll just say eliminate a boss. So what you'll do is you'll look at this uh, mini map over here. You'll see that there is the direction in which you need to go. Once you go there, you'll have a boss over there. Um, there's also um, other objectives like this one over here will say, go to this area and complete the event. It's basically like some of the quests that you would get in the campaign, but they're relatively quick. Um, there's not any one that's like specific that I need to go over. They're very, very simple. Um, some of them will be all, eliminate all the enemies in a very certain area, but all you have to do is follow this yellow arrow and it'll be very self-explanatory. So um, that one I feel like you guys should be able to understand. So what you need to do uh, for that one over here is um, complete five of them. And then what you're gonna do is actually complete five of them in each act. And then you're gonna go ahead and open up a cache. And we'll get into that later down the line because that will be something that you will need to do. Um, but I will explain uh, this a little bit more as we go along because there is technically secondary, uh, like a part of this quest. Um, a lot of these quests you'll end up kind of just naturally completing as you complete some of the other ones. But the next quest is to socket five gems into your gear. So go ahead and put five gems into your gear. Usually um, towards the end of the game, you'll see chests with three sockets and pants with two sockets. This is very common. Uh, so you go ahead and just utilize that. Basically just put the gems that you'll find on the ground uh, into your gear. If your gems look different than mine, that's because uh, one of the quests will be to actually craft gems that are of higher quality and you'll be getting these uh, books to actually be able to learn how to craft them. Um, in addition to that, uh, you'll also level up all of your uh, uh, NPCs, like the jeweler, the blacksmith, they all have this ability to be upgraded. And once you upgrade them, you'll be able to craft gems of higher quality. But all you have to do is take the gems uh, that you have, just go ahead and put them in. And if you need to take them out, all you have to do is go over to the uh, NPC, right click on the item and it will remove the gems. This is 100% free. It used to cost money, but that has been a mechanic that they have changed. As far as what gems go where, um, 
it's kind of dependent on your class, but most classes will probably end up putting diamonds for all resistances. And then if you're playing something that would normally have all resistances, which is usually intelligence, you can put other colored gems. But it really depends on what build you're going for, because most of the time you would think main stat is good, but eventually uh, your main stat wears off and you need some type of damage reduction. That's why we have diamonds in here as a barbarian. But that's how you go ahead and put in those uh, gems. Uh, inside so that was still part of uh, chapter one every time I reopen this it'll, it'll go back to whatever one that I'm on since I've completed everything and it's just gonna go ahead and go to the last one but uh, yeah that's how you put five uh, gems into your gear uh, the next one is to raise the blacksmith to level 10 leveling of the blacksmith unlocks uh, access to higher level weapons and armor pieces so all you have to do since I've already upgraded it um, on every single one this is the exact same so you just go over here and it'll just hit upgrade um, at the very end, you will need things called Death's Breath, and these are acquired by eliminating uh, elite monsters. You'll just see them as an item. We'll, we'll probably show this uh, in the gameplay later down the line, but that's what you uh, do to get your Death's Breath. The rest of it just costs gold, and more than likely you've acquired so much gold because gold doesn't really do anything in the very beginning stages of the game. It's only really utilized towards the end of the game to reroll certain things, but uh, yeah, you just go up to the uh, uh, jeweler over here and you just click on train and there'll be a button to train it. There will also be uh, one over uh, at the blacksmith as well as at the enchantress over here. So you'll have to level up all of these so you can go ahead and do all of them at once. It's really simple. It shouldn't take more than literally 20 seconds to go ahead and do all of those. Uh, and then the next one you have to raise the jeweler and then the next one is to raise the mystic. Again, they're all exactly the same. It's really simple. So um, this one over here where it says kill Rakanoth uh, for chapter one, I recommend just doing this at a higher difficulty because there's going to be a bunch of bounties that you'll end up doing that have these as the quest anyway. So again, you can double up on some of these. So as far as that goes, don't worry too much about doing like this one specifically unless you still don't have your six piece. But if you uh, don't have your six piece yet, go ahead and do that. So um, you're going to have to kill Rakanoth as well as Iswal. Uh, and if you want to find out where they are, you can just go ahead and open up the a map over here and uh, if we go to act three you guys can see uh, if we mouse over some of these uh, bosses over here uh, there's a little boss icon now those ones specifically are going to be in act four so uh, here's where Iswell would be so you just teleport over here and uh, you just basically follow along the path and eventually you'll see exactly where that boss is and then you can see exactly where Rakanoth is so um, keep in mind, if you do happen to have a bounty, sometimes you can double up on it and the bounty will be to kill Rakanoth. But if you go ahead and have a bounty that's different and you have to kill Rakanoth, the quest marker will still show up as something completely different. So keep that in mind as well. If the objective isn't that uh, boss, uh, following that arrow is not going to help. It's basically going to show you the objective. So um, going back to uh, that chapter, that's how you... Uh, defeat those bosses and reach level 50 you won't need to try to go for that you'll just naturally hit that um now moving into chapter two so for chapter two it says complete a nephilim rift on expert or higher basically you'll complete all these if you just do like the final ones but if you need to change the difficulty in the game uh, that's accessed by just going back to the game's menu and all you need to do is go to game settings and you change the difficulty the, the highest that you can select is torment 16 but um, again just select as high as you can go because it will count them but this is how you select the difficulty and then you just hit okay uh, for the sake of the video we're just going to go ahead and stay on torment 16 because there might be something that i need to show you guys that will be at a higher difficulty anyways but Again, if you complete it at a higher difficulty, it will count the lower difficulty, if that makes sense. So just go as high as you can. Sometimes you'll only need to do it basically once and I'll complete like most of them anyways. But um, the next quest is to craft a level 70 weapon or armor piece. And we're gonna go ahead and actually showcase how to do this on one of my other characters because I'm trying to craft a very specific weapon and it is also part of one of the quests anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and go on my uh, Demon Hunter and I'm trying to craft this uh, bow uh, called Yang's and I want to get it to an ancient one which is kind of part of a quest anyways. So what you wanna do is you need to train your blacksmith but we've done that in chapter one anyways. You wanna go ahead and go to forge uh, weapons here. All right, does it specify weapon or... Um, so it just says, uh, let's just love this. Uh, what is it? 
uh, weapon or armor piece. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we select, but uh, for the sake of video, we'll go ahead and craft this because we'll use this later in the video. So we'll go ahead and actually craft the uh, weapon over here and make sure it is level 71. What you can do is you can ro roll this and convert this into any legendary bow. It's random what you're going to be getting, and depending on what class you're playing, there's a higher and lower chance for certain things to be crafted, but that's the uh, part of the quest that we'll get into later. So in order to uh, complete that, we've done that. The next one is um, fully equip one of your followers. So all you have to do is open up your follower, and you go ahead and just equip a bunch of things on. I can give him my ring and then instantly just take it off. So. All you need to do is equip everything to him. The only thing that you might not have is the uh, relic for like the Templar or whatever item it is for that specific uh, uh, mercenary here. But you'll see over here there's a scoundrel token um, if you are using the scoundrel. And there's the Templar relic if you are using the Templar. It's pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't have to be a level 71, but technically go for it, might as well. Uh, then you can roll it to a legendary if you don't get it as a drop. So that's how you go ahead and complete that one where you just have to fully equip one of your followers. Again, if you don't have all the uh, necessary things, just give him your stuff and then just instantly just take it off. Um, next one is to uh, raise the Blacksmith Jeweler Mystic to 12. Uh, the other one in the previous one, all it requires you to do is to, um, where is it? level them up to 10 and now it's 12 so it's just max it out it's really simple um next one is to find kanai's cube that one i will have to link down below um and I'll, it'll be a full video uh to access it and i kind of go over how it works because there's a lot of mechanics that you will need to learn with uh the kanai's cube but um uh, next up is to reach level 70 again naturally you'll get that next one is to uh kill sedea at level 60 or higher again these will be completed through bounties most of the time you'll end up needing to do these and then kill a siege breaker and uh once again, to find some of these bosses, you'd hit M, and you just go ahead, and these would be in Act 3. So uh, one of them was Sedea. Again, use these little uh, boss icons right here. So this would be Sedea over here, and then uh, what was it? The Siege Breaker, and that's how you would complete uh, those ones over there. It's just check those out via opening up the map. And the next one is to craft a level 70 ring or amulet. This is done over at the Jeweler, which is over here in town. And you go ahead and click Forge Jewelry, and make sure you go ahead and select the level 71. And then the next part of our chapter 2 is going to be uh, replace a property on an item with enchanting at the mystic. Enchanting is very useful, replacing unwanted primary affix on a near perfect item. And then also there's transmogrifier. We're going to kind of do these uh, both at once because they're at the same spot. So, first off, as far as replacing a property on an item, you can go over here and then right click on the item and then you'd basically roll off something that you don't want um for example let's let's go ahead and throw in like this let's say i did not want life per hit so i select this and if you click on this little question mark it'll tell you all the things that you can roll one of the other parts of the quest is to actually roll the socket now these will cost materials so keep that in mind as well but all you have to do is click on it and it's going to say that it will bind it to your account um which it makes it so only you can use the item. Basically in Diablo 3, items aren't really tradable unless you acquire them within the same time frame as other people are in your game. But uh, just go ahead and click OK, and you'll see all the things that you can roll it into. So basically you lose this thing, but you will gain one of these. And you can re-roll it again and again and again, but it will cost more gold. Um, and that's basically how the re-roll mechanic works in the game. Ideally, if you can try to get a socket, try to get a socket because it is part of another uh, quest line uh, in the season journey. And then the other one that you need to do is still at the Enchantress, but it's Transmogrify an item at the Mystic. So what you're going to go ahead and do is click on an item, and then what you want to do is go to Transmogrify over here, and then just right-click on the item, and you can see all these different options. They will cost gold, but it doesn't really matter. Gold in this game, this is really cheap anyways. So what Transmogrifying an item is, is it's changing the look of the item to whatever you like. Now, in order to access some of these items, you will have to acquire them once. And every single season, you will have to reacquire the item to uh, get the cosmetic. So basically, this is how you can change the way your character looks. And you can still keep that cool item that you have, uh, which sometimes is not the best looking, but it gives you the best stats, so you just end up equipping it anyways. And then, after you complete that, that, and that will be the end of Chapter 2. 
Moving on to chapter three, complete a Nephilim riff on master. So again, that's the exact same thing. Uh, I'll pin a video again uh, if you want to see the full uh, clearing of a Nephilim rift uh, down below because it will be part of the conquest anyways, but again, you just change the difficulty and complete the Nephilim Rift. Next one is to craft a gem of Imperial or greater quality at the Jeweler. Socketing an emerald into your weapon increases your critical hit damage and is a big damage. It's pretty much, unless you're playing Thorns, you want a green uh, gem inside of your weapon. And how you can actually craft um, them, and you, what was it again? You have to uh, craft a uh, imperial or greater quality so you will have to level up the jeweler over here and when you complete bounties which is something that we'll get into later you will get these recipes and there'll be these little books and all you have to do is go ahead and right click on them i can't get them anymore because i've already uh, completed it but there will be these little books and you just have to right click on them it should be something that you won't get rid of because you can't really do anything with the item unless you go over here and just uh, learn it so uh, you have to make it imperial so what you're gonna need to do is you might need to craft some um imperials and then you can go into the flawless imperials and then later once you craft three of these basically three of these equals one of these so three of these equals one of these and then three of these will equal one of what i'm going to show you guys over here which is uh the next step up and it goes it goes higher and higher and higher and you'll see after you craft the flawless you go ahead and do the royal so you go ahead and just keep on going higher and higher until you can't go higher anymore. Uh, basically, you do want like to upgrade your gems. It's basically, it doesn't cost next to anything. It will just give you more stats. Um, and then the next one is to spend blood shards at Kadala. And she has a 10% chance to give you a legendary, which is part of another quest. It's to get a legendary from Kadala. So when you complete rifts, greater rifts, as well as the weekly challenge rifts, uh, and if you guys don't know what weekly challenge rifts, I'll link a video for that. I know the, the, this thing is so long as far as like uh, how long it takes to complete, but more likely you'll start completing these anyways. But there are um, lots of different ways to get blood shards. There's also the blood shard goblin. But all you have to do is go to uh, Kadala and then you uh, right click on, on, on the purchase. Uh, most of the time you want to try to get things that cost 25 first, and then you can move on to things that cost more. Uh, and then amulets actually cost the most in the game. But you can get legendaries off this, you can get set items, um, you can even get uh, ancient items off of this. It just takes a long time. Uh, it's just kind of random. But all you have to do is spend blood shards, which you will access uh, them by doing uh, greater rifts and rifts and bounties. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get these. Uh, but we'll, we'll go over bounties in a moment here. But uh, that is how you uh, actually complete that part of the quest, which is uh, to get uh, blood shards and spend them at Kadala. That's the only thing that you can do with them, so don't worry, there's not anything else you can do with them. You do have a maximum uh, size limit. I believe it's 500 when you start, but it will increase as you do more greater rifts. Um, but the next uh, quest over here is kill Magda, Belial. These are all in Act 2. So again, just open up your map and go to Act 2. Uh, so... Uh, Belial is over here, you just go ahead and go to the area, and then uh, just walk on over, and then you'll fight the boss, and that's how you do that one. And then Magda is over here. Sometimes Magda will be uh, the, the bounty. Uh, so again, sometimes you can double up and try to do it again at the highest difficulty, because uh, sometimes you'll be able to complete other uh, quests as you go along with part of the uh, bounty. So that is how you uh, eliminate uh, that. Uh, and then the next one is to obtain Act 1 Bounty Cash, uh, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, and then Act 5. So how you access this is you do these uh, bounties. So it was the thing that I was mentioning before where you just go ahead and uh, eliminate uh, all the enemies in an area or kill a certain boss. All the uh, waypoints with the exclamation mark, that's what you go ahead and click on and you're going to have to do some type of objective. Once you complete every single one of these objectives, you'll get a bounty cache. And for the sake of the video, I went ahead and just did that for you and it's on my Barbarian. So we're gonna go swap to my Barbarian and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what the heck is in the bounty caches. And then we could also um, use it for a gamble at Kadala because that's what Kadala really is. It's the way to splend your blood shards and kind of target a very specific item that you will want um, on a class. So um, here's what a bounty cache looks like. These are all of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up one so there's not a bunch of clutter on the screen. But uh, here's what you can get uh, from them on Torment 16. Again, try to do them as high as possible because there will be other quests uh, that you'll end up getting when you go ahead and complete those uh, bounties anyway. So the mechanic as far as uh, Kandala goes is all you do is you right click and it'll give you an item. 
Uh, sometimes it can be a legendary, sometimes it's not. If it's not a legendary, it's fine. You can either use the Hope of Cain recipe or there's other ways to still kind of utilize the uh, yellow items. Most of you guys will probably end up going over here and clicking on salvage, and then you'll go ahead and salvage all of them and you'll get uh, veiled crystals or um, arcane dust or the forgotten souls from, uh, depending on what, what tier, I guess, the item is. Um, that's what you'll get as far as rewards, which is something we'll get into later. But uh, that is how you complete uh, those uh, bounty caches. And so again, once from Act 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, do them all at once. When you do those uh, bounties, again, make sure you go ahead and do it in, in a group, but you want to split up, which is something that I mentioned before. Uh, and then the next one, we have to extract a legendary power using Kanai's Cube. Uh, this I go over specifically for that video. Uh, I will pin it again down below, but let me go ahead and show you guys an example of what the um, the Kanai's Cube requires. So it requires you to get these materials and Death's Breath. So these materials are required by doing the uh, bounties, and the Death's Breath are required from killing an elite monster. And what you're going to go ahead and do is, for the uh, quest, you want page one. There's a lot of different uh, things that you can do with Kanai's Cube, but we just want to focus in on uh, page one over here. So all you have to do is hit fill and it will fill up your uh, cube over here with all of the materials. And then what you go ahead and do is throw in the thing that you want to go ahead and convert. And all you have to hit is hit transmute and it'll say, oh, it's going to uh, extract legendary power. Just go ahead and hit OK. And it says that legendary power has already been extracted. So for this, this instance, I've already extracted it. Uh, once it's already extracted, you guys can go ahead and select it over here. In this case, uh, the Royal Ring of Rancher is going to uh, be on the ring section, or it's rings and amulets. You just go ahead and click it, and now I will be able to have this legendary power without needing to actually equip the item, or I can select whatever other items that I've d done before. And this is a really good thing that you guys can open up to see what other items are uh, obtainable in the game, and you can go ahead and put them in the cube. Most of them, and in fact, I'm just gonna recommend you guys to check out my video that goes over the Kanai's Cube, because we do go over what is the best item to put in for every single class. But that is how you complete uh, the chapter three over here when you have to extract a legendary power. You'll end up uh, extracting uh, one in each category. Uh, but again, I recommend you guys to watch my full video for Kanai's Cube, because there's just so much content to kind of go over uh, in that. But that's how you extract a legendary power for the end of chapter three. All right, so now we are on at chapter four. So the first one is to finish a level 70 Nephilim Rift on Torment one or higher difficulty. So all you gotta do is when you go into the game, make sure it is on Torment one or higher and go ahead and just select Nephilim, hit accept, and that's how you go ahead and access uh, the first quest on a chapter four. The next one is to reforge a weapon property to a socket at the Mystic. So to show off this, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a weapon uh, in the stash over here. And certain things cannot roll a socket. What it really comes down to is the secondaries over here. Like for example, um, on my item uh, that's titled Measure Schmidt uh, Reaver, on the secondary you'll see uh, that I have 15,000 life after each kill, Monsters Grant experience. If I try to select these, I will not be able to get a socket in them. You can only reroll the primaries to get a socket on them. So choose whatever thing that you don't need. Usually it's going to be something with like either uh, area damage or Elite, you usually don't want to roll off the main stat or the uh, damage over here, um, unless you're doing something very specific like ZDPS, uh, which is a completely different topic for another video. But basically, you want to roll off whatever you don't need. If you don't need cooldown, if you don't need vitality, uh, usually people will roll off like the uh, defensive stat on the item, and they'll roll it into like either damage, attack speed, depending on what build you're going for, this can matter. But for the most part, you want to sock in every single one of your weapons. Uh, but that's how you go ahead and complete the next quest over there. The next set of quests, um, which are actually going to be all four of these, are essentially all the same. So they are to slay a key warden. So the first one it says slay Odeg the key warden, next one is slay this key warden, this key warden, this key warden. They're all essentially the same quest. Um, they're just a different key warden, and they look pretty much the same anyways. So what a key warden is, is a boss uh, that will drop a machine, and then you're gonna use the machine to open up a portal to fight an uber boss. So um, how you access this is open up the map, you'll see this little key icon on every single act, except for act five. Uh, so there's four different key wardens, one, two, three, and four, and uh, in order to uh, get the uh, machine, you'll have to eliminate the key one. We're gonna go ahead and just do the one in act one, because usually it's a little bit closer than the rest of them, but uh, we'll go ahead and show this one in its full entirety. 
this one uh, this one I want to actually will do act two the reason why is there is a purple arrow normally and it's not going to appear if the um, if the key warden is uh, too close so let's go ahead and select this one here we go so now I can show you this purple um, arrow because the key warden will always be nearby sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll be able to just go over it but the important thing is you just have to follow this purple arrow we'll go ahead and do this boss really quick and he will drop an infernal machine the higher difficulty that you can go into, the better, because the higher chance uh, you'll see the Infernal Machine drop. So I'll go ahead and pick these up. And uh, in this instance, we can just go back by going through the waypoint so I don't get hit by a ranged uh, enemy here. And so you'll see we just got the uh, Infernal Machine, uh, Putridness. There's a lot of different machines. There's uh, four different ones. Each act will drop a very specific one. Once you complete it, you'll see this little check mark. This one, you don't need to do it with a group. In fact, no one really does it this season because the Hellfire Amulet, which is what you will be crafting, is not so great um, in this season. There's a lot better options, but it's still good to know that you can craft them. So you go ahead and get these Infernal Machines. And what you do with these Infernal Machines, uh, collect all four of them because you'll have to do all four of them. Um, but for the sake of the video, we're not going to do every single one, but I went over how to uh, go ahead and acquire it. Again, you just go ahead and have to kill the Key Warden in every single act. Um, except for Act 5. There's no keyboard in Act 5. Then you're going to go to Act 1. There's this door over here. You have to break open up the door, and this is kind of like a secret over here. And this is the Ubers in Diablo 3. So what you have to do is you just go ahead and uh, open up the portal. You just go ahead and right-click on it. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and go in the portal. There'll be a boss for you to kill, and he'll drop an organ. Let's go ahead and just show that off really quick. These bosses will be a lot more difficult than their, uh, like, normal engagement, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, watch out for the uh, butterflies that uh, Magda just throw at you, because they do happen to do a lot of damage. But in, in our case, we're pretty geared up, so it's not that big of a deal. And you'll see they're dropping Laoric's Regret, so and there's got a legendary item as well. We'll go ahead and go back to town. So these are the items that you will, you will be acquiring. So under Hellfire, you'll see that we have 13 Laoric's Regret, and I just didn't do uh, these ones over here. But what you do with these is you actually use them for crafting, which will be another part of a quest later down the line. But uh, you'll have to open up multiple portals, and for the sake of the video, I'll just go ahead and open up another one. Doesn't really matter that we're wasting it because I'm not going to do it for this video. But uh, there's another boss. You can There's four port portals in total. And uh, I always recommend you guys to do this at the highest difficulty because if it's too high, you can literally just lower it mid-game. So um, just do it on the highest difficulty because the higher the difficulty goes, the more of uh, these parts that they will drop. So that is how you go ahead and complete um, the uh, Key Warden objective. The next one is to kill Queen Erinay as well as the Skeleton King. Both of these are accessed in Act 1. So just... Act 1, again, use those little monster icons. This is where Queen Erin is, and the Skeleton King is over here. And then once you go ahead and eliminate those bosses, uh, you'll go ahead and, and need to, next up, use... Uh, where is it? Uh, reach Greater Rift 20 solo, and so Greater Rift Keystones drop from Rift Guardians and Nephilim Rift. So the Nephilim Rift, um, to access that, which is part of like a lot of these quests, all you have to do is click Nephilim Rift, hit Accept, and then Rift will open up. To do a Greater Rift, you have to get a Keystone, which is acquired from the boss at the Nephilim Rift. And then you'll have to do a 20, so go ahead and make sure you select 20. You, you might not have some of these options in the very beginning to go that high, but as you progressively go up in difficulty, you will unlock more uh, of the levels. But uh, all you have to do is 20, you hit accept, it opens up, and you'll just go ahead and have to complete it. And uh, we do show this off, it's part of another thing, it's part of a conquest, so I'll link that video down below if you guys do want to go ahead and watch that in its full entirety. Uh, but for the sake of this video, and again, I, I know I'm mentioning a lot of videos to watch, uh, I meant... I'm mentioning a lot of things in this video to watch things that I've already covered in another video just because sometimes, again, some of these are like 10-15 minutes long and sometimes people already know how to do them. But uh, that is how you do the uh, Greater Rift uh, solo. The next one is to use Kanai's Cube to upgrade a rare item to a legendary quality. Since I do need to craft a certain thing on my Demon Hunter, I'm going to go ahead and swap to my Demon Hunter. You guys can also use this to craft very specific weapons if you are looking for a weapon to cube certain classes will have a higher chance to craft a very specific item because they don't happen to have that many rings in a certain uh, section uh, of the chances to roll so uh, for example there are probably going to be um, 
let's say under like pole arms, there's more barbarian pole arms than a pole arm on a crusader, so you can have a higher chance to craft a certain thing. So uh, previously in my video, we mentioned uh, how to craft a level 70 weapon. All you have to do is literally level up the uh, blacksmith, and then you can go ahead and hit craft, and then it's going to go ahead and craft that weapon. Then you go ahead and take this weapon, and, and if you don't have Kanai's Cube already unlocked, uh, I have a video again for that, uh, and uh, that will be pinned down below. But you go ahead and you go to the Hope of Cain, you hit Fill, you go ahead and right click on your item or just drag and drop it over there, you hit Transmute, and it's going to go ahead and craft a random legendary in the same category. So in our case, it was a bow, so it crafted a legendary bow. I'm trying to get one of these that's ancient, and this is another way you guys can uh, craft your weapons and try to randomly get an ancient. Um, and then eventually, you can get your item that has already been the item that you want, and you can reroll the item to have it be a chance at legendary or primal or whatever the case may be. But that is how you access um, that part of the quest, which again is uh, towards the bottom, which is to um, use it to upgrade a rare item to legendary quality. And then the next one is to learn five black blacksmith recipes as well as learn five jewel crafting recipes. So in order to get this, what you do is you do bounties. The bounties will actually drop these, um, which I will go ahead and show off really quick. Um, I've already gotten all of the bounties, so I won't be able to show you the exact item that drops because I've already gotten it. You can't get the uh, the recipes again. You can actually acquire the recipes several different ways. You can kill goblins that will drop these crafting recipes, or you can get them out of the caches. So that's where you do the bounties. Um, and you normally you'd open up these and uh, there is a random chance uh, to get some of these uh, things to actually craft. And just so I can give you guys kind of visual representation, you'll have to technically do this anyways. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually craft a Hellfire Amulet. But what you would do is you go, um, it's, you'll need to get this anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Um, I've already learned the recipe, so I can't learn it again, but this is exactly what they look like. So this one, you'll see that there's a little like diamond on it. There'll be other ones with a little anvil on it. You just go ahead and go over to the jeweler or the blacksmith, and you just right-click on it. And I've already known this recipe, so I can't learn it again. But in order to get these, there'll be yellow ones that drop from these caches, or you'll get them off of goblins. And again, I've already got all the recipes, so I can't show you exactly what they look like, but they look exactly like this, except for they're yellow. You just go over here, and you just right-click it, and you will learn the recipe. So that is how you complete up to chapter four. And then once you complete that, there'll be this little thing over here that says claim, and you can get all of your six-piece uh, set. And this season for Barbarian, it's going to go ahead and be Wrath of the Wastes, and um, that's how you complete chapter four of the season journey. And that's going to be it for this video, but it still is not over. You still have to do it Slayer through Guardian, and we're going to be covering that in a separate video, and I will also be linking that video down below once it's out. So if you are new here and you want to see the full rest of the season journey, hit subscribe, turn on that bell, and I'll get that video out for you very soon. I just have to go ahead and render it out. It's already complete. But anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit subscribe, turn that bell, and you'll see that entire rest of the season journey as well as other gaming content. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one, and I'm signing out. Peace.